Hello cats and kitties, it's Terry Lee here and I welcome you back to another true crime video. We're in black and white so of course we're going to be doing true crime and today we're going to talk about Henry Lewis Wallace, a serial killer who was active in Charlotte from 1992 to 1994 and he also committed a murder in 1990 in South Carolina. Um, Lewis uh, was one that I asked my husband who is from Charlotte if he remembers him and he said vaguely. Uh, he was a new one to me. I came across him when I was looking at uh, serial killers from different states trying to get ideas for videos and he popped up. He was not one that I heard of uh, back in the day so to speak and it's interesting I moved from North Carolina back to where I live now in 1992, in March 1992, if I remember correctly. No, I'm sorry, 93, I moved back in 93. So he had already started killing before I moved. Now, granted, Charlotte's a large town. My chances of running into him were pretty low, but that's a really interesting and a little bit scary thing to think about. Okay, so let's talk about Henry Lewis Wallace. Let me put my glasses on and I am going to be referring to my notes. So here we go. Henry Lewis Wallace was born November the 4th, 1965 in Barnwell, South Carolina. His mother, Lottie Mae Wallace, was a textile worker and she apparently was extremely, extremely verbally abusive to Henry Lee or excuse me, Henry Lewis Wallace, and was also uh, hypercritical of him, hypercritical of every single thing he did, apparently. But that did not stop uh, Wallace from doing well in high school. He uh, served on the student council. He was chosen to be a cheerleader. He graduated in 1985 and, or excuse me, 83, and after he graduated, he became a DJ at a local radio station. So things were going pretty well for him at that point. In 1985, Wallace enlisted in the U.S. Or, or excuse me, U.S. Navy, and he married his high, high school sweetheart, whose name was Moretta Bravum. Bravum. I'm not too sure about the pronunciation there. Uh, as always with names, it's a little bit of a. Um, unknown whether you get the pronunciation right or not. Now, unfortunately, while he was in the Navy, he began to use drugs, particularly crack cocaine. And in an attempt to finance his drug use, while he was stationed in Washington State, he was arrested for breaking into a hardware store. Now, because he had no criminal record that the judge knew of, he was given two years probation. But according to his uh, probation officer. He did not show up for several of the mandated meetings that he was supposed to. And in fact, in 1990, uh, he was back in uh, Barnwell, South Carolina at that point. Now, here's where I have to stop and say that I don't understand one of my sources. One of my sources said that uh, Wallace was honorably discharged from the Navy in 1992. I don't really know how that could have happened because by 1992 he had already started killing people. I don't know if it should have said 1990, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure 1992 with an honorable discharge, I, I'm doubting that and you'll see why as I go on further in the story. Okay, um, now we're going to set, talk about his murders. He's back in Barnwell, South Carolina at this point in 1990 and we're going to go through all 11 of them. His first murder was in 1990. He killed Tashandra Bethea. She was an 18-year-old Barnwell, South Carolina high school student. He uh, left her body in a local lake, dumped it in the lake, and it was found several weeks later. He was questioned about uh, Tashandra's disappearance, but he was never linked to it, never charged with it. He was also questioned about the attempted rape of a 16-year-old girl, a local girl. Um, he was never charged for that either. In February of 1991, Wallace stole radio and recording equipment from the radio station where he had been a DJ. He was caught trying to pawn it. Now, at this point, you would think that 
his probation officer, if he was able to keep up with him in Washington State, uh, would know maybe what was going on. Maybe not. That may not be how probation and parole works. But obviously his probation has been broken at this point, and he is going down a dark path starting now. In 1991, Wallace moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. He became a manager at a Taco Bell in East Charlotte near Eastland Mall. Now, this is a part of Charlotte that is not exactly the best part. There are good people that live there, of course, and work there, but it does have its problem with drugs. Uh, Eastland Mall, the mall in that area, the, the mall that he worked near, uh, it no longer exists, but when it did exist, when I worked at a group home in Charlotte, we were not allowed to take our kids to Eastland Mall for fear that they would meet up with contacts from their old neighborhood and drug contacts, that sort of thing. So, not exactly in the best part of town at this point. Okay, his second murder, number two. In May of 1992, um, Wallace started a, a two-year uh, killing spree that May he picked up Sharon Nance who was a 33 year old prostitute and when she asked for payment after her services so to speak he beat her to death and he dumped her body by the railroad tracks and she was found a couple of days later the very next month number three the very next month in June of 1992 Wallace raped and strangled 20-year-old Carolyn Love at her apartment. Love was a friend and roommate of Wallace's girlfriend. She was also a college student. Wallace dumped her body in a wooded area, and after killing her, Wallace actually helped his girlfriend and her sister file a missing persons report for Love. Yes. It would be March of 1994 before Carolyn Love's body was found. Okay, number four, on February the 19th, 1993, Wallace raped and strangled Shauna uh, Hawk. Shauna was 20 years old. She was a college student, and Wallace was her supervisor at Taco Bell. Um, he later went to her funeral. On August the 10th, 1993, Wallace raped and strangled his sister's friend, 21-year-old Valencia M. Jumper. She was a college student from Columbia, South Carolina. He burned her body, and Wallace and his sister went to Valencia's funeral and sent condolences to the family. So now there are three murders that he has had some sort of act, uh, involvement with post-mortem. He has filed a missing report, a person's report, and he's gone to two funerals, which is amazing to me. September the 14th, Wallace raped, strangled, and stabbed to death 20-year-old Michelle Stinson at her apartment in front of her oldest son. Michelle was a college student and a friend of Wallace's, and I use the word friend loosely, from Taco Bell. That was number see where are we on number seven if you're keeping keeping track on February the 4th um, let's see oh I think I missed one I think I missed on February the 22nd 1993 he raped and strangled 24 year old Audrey Spain who was a co-worker and a manager at Taco Bell she was the fifth person that he killed so I think we've done seven now, I think, that he has killed. Now, on February the 4th of 1994, Wall, or Wallace was arrested for shoplifting, but at that time, they did not connect him to any of the murders. By that time, he had already killed seven people, six, uh, six of them in Charlotte and one in South Carolina, and they had not connected him to any of them yet. So on February the 20th, he found his eighth victim, Wallace raped and strangled Vanessa Little Mac, 25. Wally, uh, Wallace knew her because her sister worked at Taco Bell, and he killed her at her West Charlotte appointment, or apartment. Excuse me. Number nine, on March 8, 1994, Wallace raped and strangled Betty Jean Bauckham, 24. Bauckham was a friend of Wallace's girlfriend, and she worked with Wallace's girlfriend at Bojangles. She was an assistant manager there. Wallace stole valuables from her apartment and he left in Bauckham's car. He pawned the valuables and he abandoned the car and left it at a shopping center. Number 10. 
Wallace came back to the same apartment complex that Bauckham had been in, Lake Apartments, and murdered 18-year-old uh, high school student Brandy June Henderson. This is in March of 1994. She was the girlfriend of an acquaintance. He raped and strangled her as she held her 10-month-old son. He attempted to strangle the baby, but the baby survived. Number 11. Somewhere between March the 8th and March the 12th, Wallace raped, strangled, and stabbed 35-year-old Deborah Ann Slaughter. She was a co-worker of Wallace's girlfriend. He stabbed her 38 times in the stomach and robbed her for her money. And her body was found on March the 12th. It was thought that he robbed her for drug money. Wallace was arrested on March the 13th. They found a fingerprint in one of the crime scenes, uh, brought him in. He obviously had a record at that point, so they, were, they had his fingerprints on file. After his arrest, he spent 12 hours confessing to the 10 Charlotte murders and later on to the one in Barwell, South Carolina, to, to Chandra's murder. He described his victims and his crimes in detail. Now, Wallace would not go on trial until September of 1996, and I know that sounds like a long time, but there were several issues that came up. One of them was venue, where was the trial going to take place? The other one was dealing with DNA evidence and what could be admitted and what wouldn't be admitted, and also jury selection, which took a while. The prosecution sought the death penalty. They wanted the death penalty for, obviously, for 10 premeditated, premeditated murders in Charlotte. That's not surprising that they were seeking that. The defense was hoping for a life sentence. Um, I don't think they really thought they could get him off at this point with the DNA evidence and the fingerprint, but they were hoping to play to the jury's sympathy by saying that Wallace had a, a mental illness and they were also trying to say that the murders were not premeditated. Now that was a pretty hard point to get across considering he went to these people's apartments and killed them. So obviously he was thinking about it beforehand and the jury didn't buy any of that. And on January the 7th of 1995, excuse me, 1997, Wallace was found guilty of nine murders and given nine death sentences. And you're like, but Terry, there were 10 murders in Charlotte. There were, but for some reason, he was not convicted of Sharon Nance's murder, the very first murder. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but when I went back and looked at the list of murders that he was convicted of, her name was not on it. So apparently, um, I don't know if they didn't have enough evidence in that murder. I'm not entirely sure, but she, he was not convicted of her murder. So he was found guilty, obviously given nine death sentences. And after, after that happened, Wallace made the following statement to the victim's families. And I quote, None of these women, none of your daughters, mothers, sisters, or family members in any way deserved what they got. They did nothing to me that warranted their death. Now, unless it's in a later statement that I didn't see, the words, I'm sorry, weren't in there anywhere. Okay. Wallace is serving his time in Raleigh Central Prison, which is where the bad, really bad boys go in North Carolina. Um, I've actually been to Raleigh Central Prison. It's an imposing place. Let's put it that way. Uh, I went there as a part of my job as a social worker for a group home. And it's, yeah, it's definitely an imposing place. Since his death sentence, Wallace has appealed his sentence several times. Uh, the North Carolina Supreme Court denied his appeal in 2000, and the U.S. Supreme Court denied it in 2001. So he's pretty well stuck there at this point. In 1998, June the 5th, Wallace married former prison nurse Rebecca Torrijas, Torrijas, I'm guessing again. The ceremony was held in Here's irony for you. The ceremony was held next to the state's execution chamber at Raleigh Central Prison. 
so he's a married man. As far as I know, he's still married. I did not see anything about him being divorced. Also, as far as I know, the latest thing I had on him was 19, or excuse me, 2020. And as of 2020, he was still in Raleigh Central Prison. I do not know if he's been executed since then. I didn't find anything that said that he was. So in which case, he has been on death row for 26 years. That's kind of amazing. Um, I know he's not the only person to spend that amount of time on death row. I don't know what his, I don't know where he is in line to be executed. I don't know if that's coming up soon or not. Um, so we'll see. If I have an update on that, I will definitely let you know. I'll try to update cases when I have cases, uh, things that I can update you with. So, yeah, this one is, like I said, a little short. My videos have been short lately. I'm not entirely sure why. But they just seem to be on the short side of late. Uh, I'm sorry it took so long to get this one out to you. I have had a fibromyalgia flare, and so uh, last week was pretty much a lost week. My next video is going to be a mental health video because May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So if you want to check that out, I would be greatly, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. Oh, and I also recently celebrated my 100th video. Yes. So this is video, I think, 102, 102. I want to thank you for those of you who have been along for the whole ride or all 102 videos. And I want, and I want to thank you if you've just started, if you've just newly subscribed. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I do mental health, ASMR, and true crime videos. I tend to alternate true crime and ASMR. So if you like either one of those types of videos, please feel free to subscribe and like and comment. I love to get comments. And I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.